She's an award-winning author, journalist, and professor who is dedicating her career to challenging social injustice. To me, a modern hero is really a warrior for equality. Who is this modern hero? My name is Farai Chidea, and this is my story. Farai is a woman of many talents, but writing has always been part of her DNA. Her grandmother once wrote stories for the longest running African-American publication in the U.S. And years later, her parents started a newspaper in Zambia. You come from a lineage of journalists, and that yes. is definitely in your blood. I love writing, and I've been doing it since I was a kid. Farai was born in the summer of 1969 and spent her early childhood in New York City, a melting pot of diverse cultural backgrounds. As a kid, it never struck me that anyone's race would be more or less a reason to be around them. My best friend was half Jewish and half black. And in New York, obviously I knew what race was, but it wasn't a big deal. But that all changed when Farai was just six years old and her family moved to Baltimore. It was very clear that people took race as this way to define your social set, where you lived, how you were treated. I think that that was a really seminal moment for me in realizing things that people consider normal in one place are just considered abnormal in another. The city's public school system highlighted the racial divide. I was in this all-black classroom, and we were literally using textbooks that were 20, 30 years old. And so it was really clear, you know, that nobody particularly cared how well people were educated in that school. Just really struck me like, okay, so this is the way the game's being played. Despite the challenges, Farai excelled in school and advanced to the gifted and talented program. Although school life was improving, her home life began to unravel when her parents got a divorce and her dad moved back to Africa. Your dad was an important part of your life yeah. until that point. Yeah, my dad was, was actually a very nurturing person and was a big influence on me. I didn't see him again until I was 27. Farai's mother became a driving force and worked tirelessly to provide her kids the best future possible. That included going to college. My mom, you know, really scrimped and saved to make sure that we could do the full college tours, et cetera. And I felt like college was the place where you got to learn about how other people live their lives. So I applied to a bunch of schools. Farai was accepted to Harvard University, where she majored in English with intentions of becoming a novelist. But after landing an internship for minority students at Newsweek during her senior year, she had to rewrite her career plans. At what point did you know, I want to be a journalist? I didn't know I wanted to be a journalist until after I was a journalist. I got to work one semester and one summer in the Boston Bureau. And I went to one neighborhood in Boston that was known for being really anti-black, like a neighborhood where black people should not go. And everyone in, in the bureau was just like, okay, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. And I was like, of course I'm going to go. You seem fearless. Were you ever afraid going yeah. to Yeah, no, I'm afraid. But I feel like doing the work is, is always personally transformative. It's the, the whole construct that someone will open their lives to you. After graduating, Farai kicked off a four-year stint at Newsweek where she was honored to earn a spot in their Century Club, recognizing the top 100 people whose careers were expected to make a difference in the world. So it was an award that Newsweek had given, um, you know, just to people who they thought were doing great work or promising, and it was very humbling to me. Farai went on to merge her love of pop culture and politics as part of the team at MTV News, and later was inspired to launch popandpolitics.com in 1995, which lasted 15 years and became a training ground for young journalists. It was one of the first online pop culture magazines in the nation, which landed her the number seven spot on politicsonline.com's list of 25 people changing the world of internet and politics. It also earned her a Moby IT Innovator Award. 
What did you want to come of it? What I originally wanted to come of it was a way to reach younger people with political information that they would pay attention to. Farai was simultaneously working on her first book called Don't Believe the Hype, which was a critique of race in the media. Her unique viewpoint evolved into a whole new career path, political punditry. Tell me how you got into becoming a pundit, because that is such a unique space. When Don't Believe the Hype came out, I did a bunch of TV interviews, and um, CNN had me on, and then they had already, uh, I think, had in progress this whole idea to hire millennials to do some punditry, so that's how I got brought in. Farai was launched into the media spotlight and has spent more than two decades providing political analysis and commentary to networks like CNN, ABC, MSNBC, Fox News, and HBO. She's even tackled the airwaves as host of NPR's News & Notes, which earned awards from the National Association of Black Journalists and the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association. But her work doesn't stop there. She's penned five thought-provoking books, tackling tough issues like race, gender, voting rights, and the lives of American workers. And her work is now used as a teaching tool at a number of colleges around the country. Do you think that these experiences that you've had throughout your life shaped your direction in wanting to educate others so that they can make ethical, informed decisions in their life? Yeah, I do think that my, my own experiences in the workplace certainly influence why I've spent so much time mentoring people, because I think in some ways mentoring is the only thing that works. For I served as an educator at institutions like USC, NYU, and her alma mater, Harvard University. If you're in a system that it fundamentally has some level of injustice, then you train other people to be ethical and successful so then they have power and they can make ethical decisions and reward people. And so every time someone who I've mentored moves into a leadership position, I feel like I've done my job. And for her latest venture, Farai is conducting a year-long research project at MIT and Harvard set to address race, gender, and socioeconomic injustices. I'm excited to spend time doing all this research and doing it in ways that are more analytical and also more creative. Farai isn't exactly sure what her future holds, but she's never going to stop advocating for the underdog. All the things that you do, they all work together for yeah, a purpose. absolutely. What do you think your purpose is? I'm someone who completes puzzles. Some of the things I've written have allowed other people to put together puzzle pieces of how they view society, and that's been really helpful for them. And you're gonna continue to do that? Oh, of course, 110%. If you like this story, please share. It helps us bring you more modern heroes.